and then bone changes. As I said earlier, there are two parameters, paraarticular osteoporosis, non or no paraarticular osteoporosis. These you can divide arthritis into two categories and is important. One on your left side, it is a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. You can see the narrowing of the joint space because of the cartilage thinning, osteopenia, this GRA. One on your right side is hemophilia. There is no osteopenia at all. On the other hand, the head is flattened, maybe fragmented, and there is a pseudo tumor in the neck of the femur because of the hemorrhage. This is hemophilic pseudo tumor in the neck, but hemophilic arthritis of the hip. Now, third is ABC cartilage. It could be atrophied or thinned out or hypertrophied or complete disappearance. Discombobulations such as in neuroarthropathy or it may calcify. Again, coming back to degenerative joint disease because it is common after certain age, DJD is common. Cartilage atrophy resulting in marked thinning of the joint space. Erosions are noted on either side. These are not inflammatory erosions, these are subarticular cysts. And then there is no paraarticular osteoporosis, classical of degenerative joint disease. Secondary degenerative joint disease, as I have already mentioned, could be post traumatic, post inflammatory, post infectious, post radiation also ones can get. Distribution. In the same joint, as we have seen earlier, say degenerative joint disease, who stressed on the superolateral segment of the hip joint. Why? There is a weight bearing, there is a stress bearing. And on the other hand, if it is universal, the entire cartilage is thin and the entire narrowing of the hip joint space has occurred, you think of an inflammatory or other type of joint. Erosion, E stands for erosion, hibernation, encephalopathy, erosion. These erosions could be peripheral, such as generally occurs in tuberculous arthritis. And central, infective, or it could be universal in any inflammatory type of arthritis such as rheumatoid arthritis or even acromosis. Rheumatoid arthritis, adult rheumatoid arthritis, erosions can occur and non-rheumatoid juvenile reactive arthritis also you may get erosions. You can repeat of a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis to stress upon not only the narrowing of the joint space, particularly medial. Remember, is quite opposite of degenerative joint disease. And then osteopenia. Universal erosion, that is the entire head of the femur and entire cup of the acetabulum is eroded, markedly thinned out and there is protrusio stabili deformity. This is classical advanced rheumatoid arthritis. Osteopenia, note that. Peripheral erosions, there are several occasions in this particular case, it is pigmented with lunaturocinovitis. There is proliferation for known reason of the synovium and produces multiple erosions. It may, these erosions may extend along the synovial sheath or tendon sheath. Lack of osteoporosis is important here. Another case of uh, PVNS, there is a trochantic bursa, the synovium proliferates and you produce a large lytic lesion simulating a tumor. On the left side, it is universal narrowing, multiple erosions both in the acetabulum as well as in the head of the femur, but yet it is not rheumatoid arthritis because there is no paraarticular osteoporosis. Now we come to infective causes particularly in our country, infective arthritis is quite common both in children and adults. The two tuberculosis, bacterial, pyogenic, osteomyelitis and pyogenic arthritis, staphylococcal and tuberculosis arthritis, viral, of course today we do not see smallpox uh, type of arthritis, we may find the sequelae, smallpox has been completely eradicated, so we do not see the osteoarticular changes that occur in smallpox. Fungal, Yes, 
both in immunosuppressive patients and otherwise you can get fungal infections like the ectomycosis, candidiasis, nocardiosis, spiroketal, again spiroketal due to syphilis is uncommon today. EOS also is uncommon. Parasitic, yes, occasionally we see hydrated cyst. Historically, guinea worm also used to migrate into synovium and produce some sort of arthritis. Septic arthritis, pyogenic arthritis, classically, the first thing is the white line of the femoral head disappears. So, also the vestibular margin. And then you find marked thinning of the joint space. If you can get the fat planes, there may be displacement of the fat planes due to fluid. And then eventually, marked narrowing and disruption of the joint with osteomyelitis of the head and neck of the femur, as well as the acetabulum. Skill erosion, often bedridden patients can get bed sores and secondarily the erosion of the ischium can occur. And osteomyelitis on your uh, right hand side in a child, look at the osteomyelitis of the proximal end of the femur with sclerosis, periosteal reaction and displacement of the head of the femur. These are the sequelae of septic arthritis. Often these are mistaken for congenital dislocation or stabular dysplasia. But then in a stabular dysplasia, you have to find the ossification splendor for the head of the femur. Whereas in pyogenic arthritis, it completely disappears, it is dissolved. That's how you differentiate between these two. And in chronic uh, septic arthritis or sequelae, you find a lot of sclerosis and disruption of the joint. Sclerosing osteomyelitis, it is uh, one on your uh, left hand side. Look at the iliac bone, diffusely sclerotic, extending to the vestibulum, the slight narrowing of the joint space. And the, on the one on the right side, paraplegia with osteom secondary infection through bed sores and otherwise, you see extensive septic arthritis bilateral. Tuberculosis, as we said, early tuberculosis, you get para osteoporosis, synovial effusion, peripheral erosion, then thinning of the cartilage, then of course the entire universal thinning or atrophy or resolution of the cartilage and uh, uh, reactive changes on either side. One on your left side shows tuberculosis of the greater trochanter irregularity. So somehow bony protrusions are uh, the targets for tuberculosis. One of them is greater trochanter and see the calcification of soft tissue, that is the calcification necrosis, abscess eventually calcifies, sometimes it completely resolves. At the same time note the hip joint, mark narrowing of the joint space. The two films on the right side also show a little reactive, more reactive sclerosis which ordinarily does not occur in acute tuberculosis, but in chronic tuberculosis either due to reactive sclerosis because of the resistance of the patient or due to secondary infection you may get some sclerosis. This is of course the post uh, fracture nailing of the upper femoral shaft and after nailing the patient develops sinuses with discharging pus, this osteomyelitis due to secondary infection and sinus tracts could be outlined by doing a sinusogram. Take a small fine catheter, put it into the sinus, inject under pressure, you see the tentacles of these tracts of pus. Hydrated cyst is rather rare, but a hydrated cyst of the bones can see, namely in this particular patient, both the stabulum and the head is absorbed. Proximal shaft shows the hydrated cyst of cystic lesions both in iliac bone, head and neck of femur with a pathological fracture of course and dislocation also. The MRI, there is nothing specific that it shows a low signal in the reactive bone area and high signal in the cystic areas. This is a specimen showing the daughter cyst and the major cyst. Hemoglobin of this is sickle cell anemia thalassemia or the combination of sickle and 
thalassemia. Sickle cell anemia, ischemic necrosis, is rather common. If it is a long bone shaft, it is called infarcts. In the article margins, we call it ischemic necrosis. Almost similar to hepatitis disease. Look at the thick article marginal sclerosis and then a bone fragment as if though there is a sequestration, non pyogenic sequestration, osteonecrosis. These are the specimens of varying uh, degrees of osteonecrosis and reactive bones surrounding the necrosis. As I said earlier, if it occurs in the shafts, it is we call it bone infarcts in sickle cell anemia because of the sickling phenomenon in the vessels, you get infarct, ischemia and infarcts. Whereas in thalassemia, the major feature is hypermedullosis, hypertrophy of the medulla to compensate for the anemia. And look at the iliac bone, mosaic type of appearance is the cone view of the iliac bone just to focus upon the matrix of the iliac bone, upon the spongiosa, how it has changed because of the hypermedullosis compensatory hypertrophy of the bone marrow. Metabolic and endocrine diseases, we said earlier. Note this, there is slight uh, osteopenia, but most important is there is a pseudo fracture both in the neck of the femur as well as the ischiopubic junction. These are called loser's zones, not necessarily stress fractures, but loser zones in the sense the bone is so soft, even a pulsating artery can produce this lack of mineralization in that area. That's why these are called pseudo fractures or loser zones, the case of osteomalacia. Neuropathic joint could be congenital, congenital insensitivity to pain or myelomeningocele or acquired spinal cord lesions, syringoma area, any trauma to the spinal cord. Diabetes, that is the most common cause today for a neuropathic joint. Infections, syphilis of course is rare. Leprosy of the hip is rather rare because it restricts itself to the, up to the knee. Neuropathic joints, look at the discombobulation. Most important finding is lack of paraarticular osteoporosis. That is one. Complete disruption of the joint, the resorption of the head and neck of the femur and soft tissue, ossicles or ossifications or calcifications, debris. This is typical of a neuroarthropathy. Neuropathic giant acquired central neuropathy, injury to brain, can produce spinal cord, syringomyelia, neurosyphilis, spinal cord tumors, infections, myelitis, peripheral neuropathy, diabetes mellitus, leprosy and occasionally peripheral nerve injury can also produce that. Toxic causes like fluorosis, lead poisoning in children could produce sclerosis of the article margins, but uh, not necessarily the joint changes. In fluorosis also, diffuse growth of the bones, but in children occasionally you can get rickets. That's why the physis or the lucency between the head of the femur and the neck is increased. That's because there is a lot of osteoid tissue, but no mineralization. That's why there is no calcification. Steroids. Steroids and radiation also could produce neuroarthropathy. For example, here look at the hip, again discombobulated. The general osteopenia is due to steroids. Soft tissue changes, A, B, C, D, yes. That's the last one, synovial effusion, you can find the displacement of the soft tissue planes or with ultrasonography, soft tissue atrophy, then there is a disuse or there is polio, swelling, again due to edema, calcification, soft tissue calcifications we have seen in Lotus abscess, ligaments may calcify, tendons may calcify, barsa muscle in various crystal deposition disorders. Calcific tendonitis, hydroxy, appetite crystals may calcify, often occurs in shoulder, but it may occur in the hip or any other joint. 
hemophilia, you have seen an example earlier, lack of paraarticular osteoporosis, soft tissue hemorrhages and calcifications almost simulating myositis. Synovial will osteochondromatosis, again an idiopathic condition, no paraarticular osteoporosis, multiple calcific densities. This is primary synovial osteochondromatosis. Secondary type of synovial osteochondromatosis can also occur in degenerative joint disease or any other joint disease where there are synovial shreds and calcification and loose bodies. Of course, the hip joint is a tight joint, so secondary synovial osteochondromatosis is rather rare. Loose bodies do not occur ordinarily. Whereas in knee, it can occur. Here, the osteochondromatosis is not in the hip joint. It is in the synovium. Metaplasia of the synovium in the bursa. Rarely they become malignant. And occasionally, secondary erosions of the neck of the femur, one may see. Another example, almost extending into the proximal thigh, not only nodular, these are curvilinear, a type of calcifications, rounded, nugget-like calcification, arc-like calcification, classical or chondromatous element. Myositis also becomes progressive, diffuse calcification and ossification of the muscles. Today it is called fibrodysplasia calcifications progressive. This is of course the entire body, not necessarily restricted to the hip or acetabulum. This is post-operative heterotrophic ossification often occurs after the child knees or otherwise hip joint replacement due to trauma, hemorrhage and due to atrophy. So metastatic type of calcification occurs in the atrophy tissues. Miscellaneous causes, neurofibromatosis. If there is a plexus form type of neurofibromatosis, occasionally you may get erosion or thinning of the bones. Sometimes even the long bones or forearms and the legs, you may get hypertrophy of the bones also. Occurrences I have already mentioned, alcaptinuria, absence of homogeneous acid, oxidase. It leads to the accumulation of homogeneous acid in the cartilages. That's how we get cartilage calcification, secondary degenerative changes. Again, notice there is a universal type of osteopenia, not selective paraarticular osteopenia. Slipped epiphysis is easy to diagnose. Old slipped epiphysis mark a deformity of the head and the femur. These always get the history of previous trauma. There are two conditions called regional migratory osteoporosis. It is idiopathic again. Spontaneous regression is known. Just osteoporosis of the localized to the hip joint. The acetabulum, the iliac bone, as well as the head and neck of the femur. And there is transient osteoporosis of hip also. There is another variant. Occasionally, the patient gets pain. You see the osteoporosis can occur in children or adults. In pregnancy, it can occur. But once you recognize, you keep the patient under conventional type of treatment, conservative measurements, it will spontaneously disappear, come to normalcy. We have already mentioned about the osteomalacia and pseudo fractures in the neck of the femur. Note the ground glass appearance of the bones due to osteomalacia. And it looks like a tumor arising from the ischial fibrosity. Actually, it is old evulsion injury of the ischial apophysis, especially sports injury, full of the muscles, hematoma. Even without massage, you can get hemorrhage and calcification. You can see the old injury of the stabulum also. So that's the end of uh, this talk. Namely, we have concentrated on the hip joint, not only the joint, the bones edges that form the joint, namely the nominated bone, the stabulum, the head and neck and the proximal shaft of the femur. Thank you.